And then there's this Jimmy Rustler. Today we're talking about the controversial new trailer for the, the official Battlefield channel game, on May the 23rd. Oh my god. franchise appears to have finally caved in. Oh my god. 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 It's on the game. Why do you have to be mad? I can't tell you how excited I was to see that a first person shooter was going back to a historical theme with Battlefield 1, and ever since that game came out, it looks like AAA shooters as a whole are going to start returning to historical settings. And that's been great. But it seems like with this, there's an annual uproar about these games with many people making complaints about two things. Historical accuracy and respect to the source material. First, to look at historical accuracy. And this is something that I agree is fairly far off in, say, the new Battlefield trailer. There are many weapons, uniforms, and vehicle combinations that do not make any sense and were not present in World War II. And this is something that some people are jumping on. I mean, even I made an overly elaborate meme about it. But a lot of people, me included, are giving it a pass as it looks like the trailer was just for multiplayer mode. And to be fair, multiplayer modes, by their nature, add non-historically accurate elements for the sake of gameplay and to keep things interesting. Battlefield 1 did this, COD World War 2 did this, World at War did this. So it's not really that big a deal and people are acknowledging that. But the bigger issue that people are upset about, and have been for most of the recent AAA historical titles, is the portrayal of women and minorities in frontline combat of these games. But both sides of the argument seem to miss the point entirely as far as the issue goes. And here are the facts. No Western Allied armies, the United States and Britain is what I'll be focusing on, used or had women in frontline combat units. So this portrayal in the character is incorrect. But that is not to say that women were not vital to the war effort for either of these countries. In both the U.S. and Britain, women found themselves working in factories, taking care of the home front, and doing everything that was required to support the war effort. They made tanks, planes, and ammunition, winter clothes, and provided food. All things needed to support the war at the front. Jobs that were just as important as those doing the fighting. As without them, the ones doing the fighting would have nothing to fight with. Women also worked as nurses overseas, saving the lives of an untold number of men. In short, the contribution from women during World War II for the countries depicted in this trailer was vital. It just didn't look like this. But there are examples of women in combat in other parts of the world. The Red Army employed female snipers throughout the war. The most famous being Ludmila Pavlyshenko, I'm sure I said that wrong, who was credited with 309 confirmed kills, with God knows how many additional unconfirmed kills, and was just an all-around badass in World War II. There were also women who fought all over the Eastern Front behind enemy lines as partisans in places such as Poland and Yugoslavia, just to name a few. Anna Zakradzirska and Wanda Geritz are excellent examples of this and have amazing stories. There were also French female resistance fighters, and many of them have already been depicted in games in the past. In short... Women were in World War II in many capacities. It was just not the same as the male roles due to social restraints of the time. So although I agree with people who are promoting backlash against those complaining about women in games, it is without a strong grasp of the real roles women played at the time. But also those who are simply leaving the argument at women weren't in World War II are also wrong, as women did play a big role. And I actually think it would be great to have a war story in this game focused around a Soviet sniper or Polish or French resistance fighter, as long as this done accurately. This whole thing reminds me of the Battlefield 1 release, when everyone was all up in arms about there being black soldiers and all the armies in the multiplayer reveal. And you got the same kind of back and forth, one side saying, that never happened, and the other side cherry-picking examples of black soldiers in uniforms of various countries, trying to make it look like the norm. But the whole argument became pointless once the game was out, and it has shown that the character customization was anything goes as far as multiplayer was concerned, but the campaign kept a history showing African-American soldiers as part of the Harlem Hellfighters, and the rest of the campaign being pretty much white guys. Because at the time, that's pretty much how it was. The same is true of Call of Duty World War II's multiplayer. In that game, it is literally anything goes, where you could play as a black female soldier in the German army. But where it counts, in the campaign, the part is supposed to be historically accurate is all white guys. Because the army was segregated at the time due to the fact that America was, to put it bluntly, well... Racist. That's it! And the campaign even acknowledges this, with how Zussman is at times ostracized for being a Jew. My son never shake hands with a Jew. My whole point is, for as much of a historical mess as this trailer is, AAA developers have so far seemed to come through with the historical accuracy where it counts in the campaign. The second issue brought up about Battlefield 5 is the lack of respect for the war and those who fought in it. But in my opinion, no game really does respect the war or those who fought in it. Just think about it on its surface. 
All games about World War II are taking the most deadly conflict in human history that was rife with pain, misery, and death, and turning it into something we do for fun in our free time. Even if we play games with the sense of the real-life events in our heads, we're still turning the representation of a human being who actually fought in this war and had his own thoughts and feelings into a point towards a kill streak. And don't get me wrong, I don't necessarily think this is a bad thing. I've been known to be less than reverent when talking about some topics in the past. <laughs> And there's definitely a time and place to just have fun with history, even with more serious topics. And I think video games are an excellent medium for this. But there are also times to be respectful to history. And video games, especially first-person shooters, just by their nature, are terrible for this. In fact, the only one that I can think of that would even come close to some sort of respect level would be Call of Duty World at War. That leads to a very poignant message at the end about the human cost of World War II. But you spend the whole game leading up to that ending creating that human cost that you're later told to respect. And it kind of takes the punch out of the message, as opposed to, say, a film or book where you're merely an outside observer. In short, just, just please stop arguing about this. Just hope for the best for the campaign, which to be honest I've never seen a historical World War II shooter with a bad campaign, and just let multiplayer be whatever it is and have fun with it. Yeah, it's inaccurate that you're in a squad of all women, but it's also inaccurate that you die and come back 10 seconds later, so don't be selective with your outrage on accuracy in a game mode that is meant to be fun first and realistic second. <laughs>